Hello there and welcome to another tutorial. Today we're talking about the takeoff trim setting in the FS Labs A320, A319. And the reason for this is that I have been getting some questions about this topic uh, lately and so I thought I might as well do a video about it. Before we get into the practical side of things, we will talk about uh, the theory, uh, why the trim setting for takeoff is so important and uh, later on we'll determine how we get the actual trim setting, nose up, nose down, um, from the MAC takeoff weight. Now if you are interested in learning more about center of gravity, mean aerodynamic accord, MAC for short, uh, center of lift pressure, that sort of stuff, have a look at my video called FS Labs Basics Center of Gravity and Trim Setting. I will leave a uh, link in the description below, so have a look at that if you like. Ideally, the aircraft is loaded in such a way that it will fly with the least amount of stabilizer trim downforce that it has to produce in order to maintain a stable flight path. Um, by doing that, you are making sure that the aircraft is uh, causing the least amount of drag and can fly economically. However, more interesting for our takeoff is the position of the center of gravity um, and the corresponding horizontal stabilizer trim setting. And that is important uh, because that determines the way the aircraft behaves on takeoff and especially uh, during the rotation, the initial rotation, to put the aircraft in its uh, first climb out pitch attitude. So no matter where the actual center of gravity is, if you set the correct trim setting accordingly, then the aircraft will behave fairly similar on each takeoff. And so the pilot can rely on the same kind of feel um, when he rotates the aircraft to the uh, climb up pitch attitude. So let's have a look at a, a typical um, trim sheet um, where we have a graph about the takeoff weight position, the center of gravity for takeoff weight, the so-called MAC takeoff weight, same thing for the zero fuel weight and the zero fuel weight MAC or MAC zero fuel weight as it's uh, shown in the MCDU in the FS Labs. And that graph also shows you how the center of gravity actually moves. Uh, why does it move? Well, obviously, mainly due to the fact that fuel is being burned and either being taken out of the center tank or the uh, wing tanks. But we'll get to that uh, in a few seconds. For now, um, let's have a look at another example here where the aircraft has been loaded in a way that the center of gravity is very far aft. Um, it's within the envelope, as we can see, um, for takeoff weight and for zero fuel weight. However, we would need a very, very large nose down trim setting. So in this case, minus 1.5. Now this kind of uh, loading might not be so economical to the flight, but it's not dangerous. So again, as long as the pilots actually set the stabilizer trim a minus 1.5 down for takeoff, all is good. However, if they are making a mistake and uh, forget to set the trim and you have this very, very uh, large uh, discrepancy between the actual trim setting and the, the one the pilots actually selected, or for example, if the load sheet has been prepared in the wrong manner, then of course things become dangerous uh, because like we said, the aircraft will behave a lot different to what the pilots are used to during the takeoff and rotation. So in this case, the pilots could be very, very uh, surprised by a very fast rotating aircraft and if they don't react accordingly, um, a tail strike might occur. A wrong trim setting to the other side will mean the pilot has to pull back on the stick a lot harder to get a rotation of the aircraft. And that would mean the initial climb out will be shallower. And in case of an engine failure, this could lead to a case where the obstacle clearances are not met anymore. So you can see how critical um, these things are for a safe flight. Uh, so the loading, the preparation of the load sheet and the trim setting for takeoff are very, very, very important for a safe flight. 
Now in this example we can see we have a takeoff CG of about 37.8 and looking at the trim wheel that corresponds to a trim setting of about minus 2.1 down. You can also see that that trim setting is still within the green band and that means if you set a wrong trim setting for takeoff you will still be as the pilot we will still be able to um, correct that misplaced uh, trim setting by inputs into the flight stick. If you're outside the green band then the aircraft is outside of its envelope and hence the aircraft could get out of control. All right let's have a look at the MCDU page where we can see the loading of the aircraft and um, lots of information on here. You can manipulate obviously the uh, loading um, of the different cargo compartments and the uh, three passenger compartments um, in the aircraft to manipulate the uh, the position of the center of gravity. On the right you have the passenger loading with the maximum uh, possible passenger uh, seats available and on the left hand side you have the different cargo compartments. Um, depending on the aircraft type 320, 319 you have uh, different uh, amounts of cargo compartments which I will show you uh, in a second. So looking uh, from the side, we can see that compartment one has three um, container positions, if you like. So we have section 11, 12 and 13. That's in compartment one. We have compartment three with uh, sections 31 and 32. And also we have compartment four with sections 41, 42 and then compartment 5 with the sections 51 and 52 and that of course is in the A320. The A319 looks a bit different. It has a compartment 1 with sections 11 and 12 only. It does not have a compartment 3. Um, it has a compartment 4 with sections 41, 42 and then a compartment 5 with only section 52. And that, of course, is being reflected also by the MCDU. You can see you have compartment 1, 4 and 5 only in the A319. Before I show you how to actually convert the MAC takeoff weight into a trim setting for takeoff, uh, let me just quickly go back to this chart again where we can see how the center of gravity actually changes during the flight. And that is uh, due to the fact that fuel is being burned and depending on the position of the fuel that's being burned, um, the CG just wanders about in a certain manner. So let's assume we've filled all the tanks to its maximum, um, where we have fuel in the center tank, in the wing inner tanks, and in the wing outer tanks. So in this case, the fuel sequence would be such that first of all, the center tank fuel is being used and uh, we can see that most of the fuel if not all of the fuel is actually in front of the normal center of gravity position and hence when you burn that fuel the center of gravity actually moves back and that's what you can see at the top of the graph where the center of gravity starts off at an index of about let's say 53 and then slowly moves back as the weight decreases because of the fuel being burned and it moves back to about um, 62 let's say at the index and we can see that's the point um, where there's no more fuel in the center tank and then the fuel from the wing tank the inner tank is being uh, used so it's very important to understand once the center tank is complete uh, depleted or it, if it doesn't have any fuel in it the inner tanks are being used next not the outer tanks and uh, if you look at the the way the wing is shaped um, you are taking fuel again from a further forward point um, of the aircraft with relation to the uh, center of gravity and again the uh, center of gravity moves in a certain way and the chart reflects that um, where now the center of gravity actually moves forward as the inner tank is being uh, depleted of some of the fuel 
and we know that um, the inner tanks are being used until they reach or one of them reaches 750 kilograms and at that point the outer tank fuel transfers via valves to the inner tanks and that again explains how the center of gravity moves so i've also highlighted a point of the cg where the outer tank fuel flows into the inner tanks and that's why the um the center of gravity then moves forward again now this is very theoretical i know uh, but i just wanted to point that out so uh, some people have been asked uh, or asking why the center of gravity moves in that fashion and i hope that uh, that explains it to you so now you've also learned what the mac zero fuel weight means and the mac takeoff weight means so that's the center of gravity position with regard to the mean aerodynamic chord it's just an index if you like and so in this example we have a mac zero fuel weight at 31.3 percent and a mac takeoff weight of 29.6 percent and so how do we find a trim setting for the MAC takeoff weight? Because that's the one we are looking for. It's quite simple. There's two methods really here for us in the FS Labs. Uh, one of them would be to have a external calculator calculated for us. Um, or we can use the trim wheel to determine our center of gravity and trim position. And so when we look at the trim wheel, we can see that we have an outer ring with the CG. So that's the MAC percentage settings. And then we have an inner ring where we can read off the corresponding horizontal stabilizer trim setting. So in our example, we look at 29.6. We go onto the outer scale down and uh, look at roughly 29.6 then we go to the inner scale and read off the position of the horizontal stabilizer so in this example 29.6 would roughly correspond to 0 0.2 down maybe even 0 0.1 um, don't get into this uh, in a too scientific manner um, it's a very crude determination of your trim setting and trust me uh, this method is accurate and safe enough to be used after all this is a fly-by-wire aircraft and uh, i forgot to mention at the beginning uh, maybe somebody's still wondering why do we set the uh, trim manually um, because this aircraft has an automatic trim well the automatic trim only works in the flight mode meaning on the ground there is no auto trim so we have to set the trim manually for takeoff once the aircraft lifts off transitions into the flight mode the auto trim will kick in and then set the tr um, the horizontal stabilizer to a correct position automatically One uh, very last thing I would like to point out on this picture is the trim index marker, this little triangle here. And so this is the index that you have to place the trim to. So you would rotate that trim wheel uh, in order to have the 0 0.2 down mark being equal to the index marker. So this part here is fixed and this part here actually moves when you um, move the trim wheel. Oh, and one very, very last thing now to mention, because somebody will wonder what LIC uh, zero fuel weight and LIC takeoff weight actually stands for. Um, it's just a different definition of the position of the center of gravity and it's called the loaded index CG zero fuel weight and loaded index uh, center of gravity for takeoff weight. And as you can see, it's still the same relationship of the, uh, of the center of gravity regarding zero fuel weight and um, takeoff weight. It's just different numbers because they are indexed at a different reference point.
Okay, and that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this short video about how to find the correct trim setting of the FS Labs A320, A319. As always, if you have further questions, write them down in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for all the amazing support, guys. And so, as always, until the next video, take care and happy landings.